Hi, and welcome to Maggie's World, home of the greatest karma in the world, where you find, shine, and share the light within. Today, we have a wonderful topic, which is about self-care. And I have a wonderful guest with us to share all of his knowledge and all of his information that will just really support us in creating the life that we want. My name is Maggie Ramirez, and I am your host of the show. I am the owner and founder of the Own Peace Center, and that's exactly where I found my guest. He came over to one of our yoga classes and was introduced to me. And Rafa here, my guest, Rafa Viramontes, is a self-care advocate. And he is wonderful. He came to me, and he just has so much knowledge and so much information to share with the world. And I asked him to come and be my guest because I know that the information that he has is something that is an awareness that should be spread and shared with the world. And I'm here in Maggie's world to share my world with you. So let's welcome Rafa Viramontes. And I want him to tell us his story. He has a wonderful story as to how he came to become this self care advocate and in this movement of a self-education revolution that he calls it. Rafa, please talk about how you came to, to focus so much into self-care. Well, Maggie, um, again, thank you for, for having me, first of all. Um, it's just, uh, it's been an um, interesting ride, if you will. Um, it all started with, uh, I had a tragedy Mm -hmm. that um, our family endured. Uh, we had a, a, one of my sisters um, uh, was diagnosed with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. And um, at that time, when somebody uh, in, in your family, somebody close to you um, has that diagnosis, uh, it's the first uh, incident of cancer in our family. Mm. Um, and we really didn't know how to react. And... Um, but, you know, like they say, out of uh, every tragedy, there's uh, something great that comes out of it. Yeah. And that's what I'm here to share with you and uh, the people out there watching the program. Um, you know, mainly because, um, you know, uh, my family uh, was, you know, thrust into the situation of cancer. And um, we didn't know what to do, what to ask, mm -hmm. and how to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what ends up happening is that um, through it all, we um, ended up doing, you know, a little bit of research, mm -hmm. and again, that's why, you know, the self-education and, you know, personal responsibility for our health is so important, um, because there's nobody that's going to care more for you personally um, than you yourself. There's no uh, better doctor than you. Right. Um, and if we can empower um, people and each other and ourselves by educating ourselves and asking questions and um, really digging deep and further than what um, the surface answers that we get, um, again, searching for truth is the main goal here. Yeah. And that was my goal. Um, so what ends up happening is that um, uh, my mother, I kept asking her what the doctors were telling her when my sister was going through her chemotherapy and, and the uh, radiation sessions. And uh, my mother, you know, again, understandably, um, you know, was a little confused and frustrated and scared. Right. And um, that left a lot of uh, uncertainty for the family and for my sister who was uh, enduring the battle. Um, but then uh, my mother asked me to go to one of the sessions and I started asking questions. Yeah. Uh, well, the questioning didn't go too well with the doctors, <laughs> so uh, they didn't like the questions I was asking. And um, so uh, what consequently ended up happening is that I felt um, that I was uh, not being given full information. Mm -hmm. So I did the only thing I knew to do and that was to start taking notes. And I went home and started doing my own research. Well, like I said, um, and during that time you were you were a student already, right? So you were already in the practice of doing research and practicing that at school. 
So it was perfect for you, right? Right, right. Yeah. It, was, it was just happened at that precise moment. I was yeah. going through um, uh, my course at, uh, at the university on doing research. So yeah. it was kind of, you know, um, like they say, nothing happens by accident. Exactly. And um, I was able to um, pull up substantial um, um, research on the, the um, drugs and the therapies they were giving my sister. and um, The what, chemo, right? Right, the yeah. chemo uh, what specifically. Was, what was in the medication that was actually being right, prescribed and, and actually what was she was being treated with. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I, I think um, the most uh, important things that we should do, again, um, you know, in, in caring for ourselves, is question and look for exactly what is it that we're putting in our body mm -hmm. and what are we expecting to happen to us. And that's very important to emphasize is that whenever you are going to a doctor and they're prescribing anything to you, ask. It's important to always ask before you put anything in your body temple, ask what ex what is exactly what you're asking me to drink or your, the prescription that you're giving me and to take, what is it that I'm being handed? Because you need to know it's your choice. It's your choice to be healthy. It's your, you're creating your life to be exactly what it is. So we get to be more careful as to what we intake what we not only because a doctor tells you to do it remember they always say that it's important to you know uh, the second opinion well it's always important to also question what is being asked for you to do and to actually put into your system into your body because that can have a huge effect in your lifestyle so it's important to always question what it is until you understand what it is do not take it do not you know or self-prescribe yourself, right? Correct. Unless Correct. you understand what it is. Right. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the most important thing is um, not only um, should we ask the questions, but also verify the answers that we get mm. from, the, from the doctors and nurses and what have you. Because a lot accurate. of times they're yeah. not giving us the full scope of, of uh, you know, the effects that those... Um, medications are going to have on us yeah and it's super super important because um you know a lot of times it's going to affect something that you may not even know that um you were already compromised in say you know it could be your liver your kidneys or um, any any other part of your body but um if you're aware again if you look deeper and take the initiative to um, educate yourself about it um, you know, the, the whole thing about education, Maggie, is that um, it enables us to overcome fear. Mm -hmm. See, and that's the biggest message that I can give, you know, you, the audience out there, is that we must take the initiative to educate ourselves because other than that, we will be living in fear and by somebody else's, um, you know, knowledge, if you will, or, right. you know, lack of um, information that they may not give us mm -hmm. so um, it, it's super super um, prudent and important for us to take that initiative right. you know to protect ourselves and empower ourselves um, you know by educating ourselves yeah. and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort it just takes a little bit of courage yes and I, I think it's so important to also talk about what um, you mentioned to me last time he was telling me how we get to really take responsibility for our choices. You know, um, we live in a world where it's so easy to blame society and to blame the media, the media and to blame the government for what's being offered to us. And to a certain extent, you know, it's understandable, but at the end of the day, no one's putting a gun to your head to eat that pizza or to buy that burger or to drink that soda uh, when you already know that that might not be the best choice for yourself health-wise you know to self-care so it is important to make sure that you begin to take responsibility for yourself as to what you choose from now on to create for yourself what kind of life you choose to create by the choices that you make in regards to self-care, what kind of choices are you making 
when you purchase food or growing food or not growing your own food when it is so easy and I really want him to talk about that importance where he has where he's already um, began that process in at home with his family and just his new way of of, of living life and, and creating his life so share share a little bit about that well uh, Maggie I, I think you, you you hit on some very important issues um, because it's not only in the medications and the the drugs that um, were lacking knowledge uh, but also more importantly because um, for those of us who are not sick um, we'll, just by taking that extra initiative to understand what it is exactly yeah. that we're putting into our body mm -hmm. on a daily basis yeah. meaning our food and our water our drinks um, and again if we can just understand and educate ourselves um, you know about these additives that we're being exposed mm, to, yeah. about the processed foods and how it impacts our health. Um, it's super important because I also learned through my sister's experience that um, it is very uh, difficult yes. when you're under that kind of stress, when um, we're looking at a life and death situation, to all of a sudden turn into a researcher and yes. start learning. Yeah. So. Um, like the saying goes, you don't fix the roof during a rainstorm. Yeah. You want to fix it before. Right. So the name Let's of not the get game. There. Right. right. The name of the game is prevention. prevention. So the self care starts on an everyday basis. Right. You know, on the choices we make, and um, you know, um, you touched on on you know what my family is engaged in now. Um, we're actually engaged in a, a aeroponic uh, gardening, and which um, gives us really a, a, a control, if you will, of our produce. Right. Right. That I mean, it, it is. It's so exciting because <laughs> aeroponic. Aeroponic gardening. It's, yeah, See, and it's different. I, Yes, because I really want you to even say it again because yeah. a lot of our viewers have never heard what okay. <laughs> what is that, right? Like what is an aeroponic garden well, or gardening? You right. know, it, it's... Yes, please, please share. Well, an aeroponic <laughs> garden is actually a uh, self-sustaining uh, uh, gardening tower. Yeah. Okay. Um, it doesn't require any soil. And it doesn't require any chemicals. Yeah. Um, it actually is a self-watering um, <laughs> unit uh, where you can grow um, 20 different varieties of um, food, of, yeah. of produce, um, anything that grows above ground. So, I mean, your carrots and your potatoes, nope. you can't grow them on, <laughs> on the tower garden. Right. Um, it does need but, soil. <laughs> yeah, yes. But, um, you know, as far as your, your peppers, your tomatoes, your cucumbers, um, yeah. strawberries, basil, cilantro, kale, broccoli, um, all of those uh, beautiful greens mm -hmm. that we need in our diet that um, are so rich in, in, and dense in nutrition. And by growing it yourself, a, a few things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you really become... Um, inspired and care for it and and it, it is very um yeah. it's a great experience because uh, uh, especially children if um if kids see what they've grown the food that they've grown yeah they'll they'll be more inclined to eat it and care for it yeah. so it is a beautiful thing and, I, and, and I, appreciate I, it for oh, what it is much more than just oh well you know now it's in my plate and i have to eat it oh i don't want to eat the carrots i don't want to eat the peas i don't eat the you know most definitely and and the 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 really really um great part of it is that as a mother as a, a father as a parent yeah. um providing you know um, food for your children by growing it yourself and and honestly i did i am not an expert gardener <laughs> and in six weeks i was harvesting beautiful beautiful herbs and and um, greens and and vegetables from my tower garden. And I didn't become a soil expert or a farmer, anything <laughs> like this. Um, and it, it requires very little space, maybe about a, a three by four foot, you know, or maybe four by four area. And how, how tall is it? Um, they're only about five feet tall. 
And, um, you know, the, it will uh, definitely revolutionize the way we see our food, organic, clean food. And most importantly, it gives us the opportunity to take responsibility for our personal health. And on that note, we'll go on commercial and we'll be back in a bit. And we'll talk about a little bit more on those tower gardens and self-care. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Maggie's World, where you find, shine, and share the light within. We're back with our guest, Rafa, and he's going to continue to talk to us about the towers that he was mentioning to us, how you can grow your own vegetables, your own greens, in your own home without soil. Okay, if I can do it, and if he can do it, you can do it. So let's talk about that. And also, you'll see on the site, the, his website where you can contact him so that he can, you know, bring more of that awareness and self-care education so that you can also grow, if you're interested, of course, your own tower in your home. I know that we have in L.A., you mentioned it to me last time, that we have in one of the restaurants here in L.A., we have um, the towers where that one restaurant, do you remember the name of the restaurant? Um, I believe it's called Playa. 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 And where is it at? In, in L.A., in West right? Hollywood. West Hollywood, yeah. Playa. They're not paying us for this commercial. But you should go and support them because at least you know that the food that you're eating in that restaurant is has been grown on the roof of their of their restaurant, on their rooftop. Right. They have, hun I don't know, not hundreds, but Probably many towers. towers yeah. <laughs> many towers. They have about 30 towers. And what they do is that they grow their tomatoes and their lettuce and their kale and all that yummy stuff that obviously we need. But how beautiful is it that you're going into this restaurant and you're ordering your salad and your, you know, your food and they're making that, you know, tomato sauce with, you know, organic homegrown tomatoes. That's amazing. And that is what we need to support around here. The more that we support that, the more that other restaurants will jump on board and do the same thing and be calling Rafa over here and having them, you know, set up their towers at home because you need to do that for me. Definitely. And definitely, Blanca. Definitely. <laughs> so, you know? yes. Well, Maggie, you know, um, the Tower Gardens is, is really going to uh, revolutionize our um, our food supply, if you will, yeah. and um, I think being socially responsible, um, we've all already um, have probably heard of, you know, the locavore movement. Um, that's why you know the farmers markets are so popular right now. Yeah, um, you know, because it does reduce the carbon footprint, meaning you know the resources that are spent on our producing our food. Yeah. Um, most of it, you know, uh, a lot of money goes into, you know, the transportation and, um, you know, the use of chemicals and, yes. and so forth, um, you know, to um, be able to, um, you know, produce enough food and transport it. It has to be, um, you know, additives have it's to costly. be. costly. Right. And, yeah. And the thing is that, you know, if we're truly going to, um, you know, change our world and really be uh, caring for ourselves. we do need to be conscious of everybody else around us and our environment. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to the tower gardens, it doesn't get any fresher than going from your garden to your table. Yeah. Or in, in the regards of um, the restaurants that are now coming on board, um, they are actually growing all their produce on their rooftops yeah um, and so you're not going to get a fresher salad you're not going to get a, a more socially conscious uh, meal than yeah. something that's actually grown on site yes and brought to you at your table I mean it's really incredible um, you know the way the food tastes when it's that fresh yeah and excuse me and you will be seeing this in many many uh, more places now um, there is a huge uh, tower garden, um, indoor garden inside the uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport where they have these huge towers and uh, it's, it's a very uh, large operation. They do feed into, um, they provide all the produce for all the restaurants in the airport. And um, again, 
you know, if we're if we're really going to um, change the way we are impacting our world regarding our food supply, and again, it, it goes back to self education. We have to really understand what is going on before we can actually change it. And um, once we realize um, how dependent we are on fossil fuels for our food and what impact that has, you know, on our environment, but more importantly. How is it impacting our kids? How is it impacting our future generations? And we must be socially responsible. Um, we can't just keep going this way. I think um, you know, there's a, a large. We are in the midst of a revolution, of, yeah. of conscious revolution, yeah. um, where we must make some changes now yeah. if we are going to um, leave a better world for our children. Um, but again, it it starts with us. We have to take personal responsibility, and um, it it can't get any closer than at your home. And and definitely, Aggie, um, it is a very simple way to provide food for your family. Yeah. And it's not going to get any more certified organic <laughs> than certified by you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because you know what you're going to put on your food before you. I serve certify it to you. this tomato. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Or, well, not carrot, right? Because there's no soil. But I certify this kale. Right. By Maggie's World. Right. <laughs> right. And, and we're going we're gonna to put a plan in here. We should. Right? We should. Are you going to donate? We should. We should. <laughs> it's on camera, on everyone. It's on camera right. that Rafa over here is going to donate one of these beautiful towers and we're just going to see it grow on Maggie's World. Yeah. And every time a new tomato is <laughs> born, you know, um, Maggie's World will donate to someone else, a you know, tomato? a tower. No, <laughs> a tower. We'll donate a tower every time we keep seeing these tomatoes and kale and all that yeah. stuff pop up. Wow, well, they grow really fast. Okay, so we're gonna so be I need sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> I need sponsors yeah. to sponsor each tomato, <laughs> yeah. each tomato that comes, that pops out on Maggie's World. We'll have someone um, out there. You. You know who you are. You are here to donate a tower to the needy. There's people out there that need a tower in their home because they're either not, they're not aware, they're not educated. And for each person that goes to MaggieRamirez.com and uh, writes to me and says that you will donate a tower, we will have Rafa go into someone's home see I'm putting you on the spot now but we will have Rafa go into someone's home and educate them about this tower mm -hmm. we'll donate it to them and those that are interested in getting a, a tower donated go ahead and contact us and we'll put you on the list and for each person that sponsors a tower Rafa and each time we see another tomato pop out we'll have Rafa go into someone's home and educate them about this tower how do you like that well, the, I I know uh, it's, a, it's a tall order because the 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 issue. I put him on the spot. <laughs> no worries, but the 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 only issue with the towers is that they produce in abundance. Nice. So, I, in in all seriousness, when it comes down to feeding the population, uh -huh. this is a solution. Right. Okay. There is a family in Santa Barbara. Mm. Okay. That did put about 35 of these towers on their roof wow. of their of their home okay and it's a it's a flat roof you know close to the beach and what they do is that they actually sell the produce to the public and and they also um, donate a large percentage of the produce that comes out of their gardens to the needy all right so there is a, a huge huge um, opportunity to feed more people because um, honestly the, these tower gardens are, are are something very special where they do provide a lot of food really fast mm -hmm. and we can um, feed a lot of people yeah. so you know uh, again if I, I throw it out um, to you if you are the recipient of, the, of a tower garden um, then we do want to reciprocate um, you know, you want to be feeding and helping feed other people yeah. with it. And again, if we can, you know, have this joint effort 
um, to really, you know, um, you know, reciprocate the love right. and, the, and the compassion and, and the Pay abundance that you're going to be blessed with yeah. because you will be blessed with abundance with one of these, yeah. one of these towers. Um, and you know, again, we just have to, uh, help each other and, and propagate the cause because it is, it is a, a worthwhile and, and, uh, um, endeavor, you know, to, you know, propel the self care and self education and personal responsibility, um, you know, revolution that we're in the midst of right now. Yeah. And it's very true what he mentioned. If we, you know, if you do contact us and you do sponsor a tower, or if you are the receiver of a tower, it is a commitment also that you are doing with the Maggie Maggie's World team that you will get lots of abundance. And in turn, just please share that abundance because it will be more than enough for your home. I can guarantee you when you receive an abundance, you're also you know, responsible in giving in abundance. There's so much in this world and enough for everyone, but it is our responsibility. We're not in this world alone. We're in this world with many, with our brethren. And so because of that, we get to also be responsible for them and take care of them um, and take care of this world and our, of our planet, of our mother, mother nature. Um, it's important to take care of, of this place where that is allowing us to to be and have a home in this planet you know it's it's beautiful it's wonderful and we must it's our responsibility to take care of it and not destroy it and the way we're going it's not it doesn't look so well if we don't shift right now if we don't consciously shift and come together and unite but not only unite but move together and that's really the concept of the Yitzi movement. So if you go to www.yitzi.com, Y-I-T-Z-I dot org, I'm sorry, yitzi.org, you will be part of this movement that we're doing, the Yitzi movement, which is a peace movement. And I am one of the founders of this movement. And what we're doing with this is wanting to unite the world, unite everyone to come together and move for peace move for peace that peace within finding that inner peace it's very important for us to come together and unite for that beautiful cause because when you're able to find your inner peace then you're able to create it remember when you create from within you're able to manifest it and when you're finding your inner peace you're able to share that you find shine and share the light within so with that, I would like to thank Rafa oh, for being here. Please welcome, contact man. him. Go to his website and contact him. And just get a little bit more information in regards to what he does, uh, the, the towers, the food towers. And um, just to, you know, have him, you know, bring more awareness, support the, the, his, you know, movement, his revolution that he's in. And support also us because now we're moving together in this Yitzi movement, I really want to thank all of you for tuning in to Channel 3, Time Warner Cable, and this has been Maggie's World. Rafa, thank you so much for being well, here. You, I Maggie. really appreciate it, and I hope that you and your world connect with me next week on Maggie's World, where you find, shine, and share the light within.